everybody for sticking around. Uh, I know it's a long day for all of you guys. Um, so uh, why don't you just begin? So um, my name is Park. I'm the uh, guy running the applications for HPC Advisory Council. Um, I get many of the um, you know requests all the time to run applications. So I just use the time to uh, to write out the slides so that I can share some of my experience uh, for using those app uh, for running those applications. So um, since we're not running uh, kind of late, so I'm just going to demonstrate one of the applications that I used uh, in the past. Uh, it will be useful for you guys. I will have another session tomorrow, so which is going to be the same thing, end of the day. Uh, demonstrate one of the applications as well, or maybe more. Right, this just won't work because I'm not using the clicker at all. Okay, so this slide is going to show you Right. So um, some of the applications that you know, we have done in HPC Advisory Council uh, over the years, uh, about over 130 uh, applications are published uh, for HPC, uh, in HPC area. Um, so many of the life sciences codes that you may have recognized from here, um, you know, and, um, and um, C, uh, CAE applications um, for car crash and, uh, and weather and all, all the kinds of uh, disciplines in the HPC uh, that you can find in, in this uh, slides. If you're interested, look into the website right here at the bottom of the web page. It will link you to the, uh, the page where all the studies are. Uh, it has many, we have many uh, applications throughout many generations of the systems that we have tested in the past. This slide demonstrate. Actually, this slide just show you um, some of the hardware that we have used uh, over the years. I'm showing you the latest uh, generations of those hardware, um, and we we're very grateful that we have many uh, you know sponsors for the systems that actually given us uh, the hardware. So we have, uh, we have we have the opportunity to to, to, to do testing on them. Uh, among them, we have uh, the clusters from uh, from Dell. Uh, there are 32 nodes and 33 node clusters. Uh, there are Haswell and Ivy Bridge, and we have the the other clusters from AMD from B4, um, and we also have GPU clusters at the bottom. So it actually allow us to run some of the studies uh, for the, the uh, using the GPU and also accelerator because they're capable of using uh, of putting uh, you know uh, acceleration hardware. And we also have the Lustre uh, InfiniBand uh, um, on the right-hand side, so you can see. Uh, so, so this is a snapshot of all the uh, hardware that we have, we have gathered from, uh, from, from the past years. Um, the sign-up for, for using those uh, is actually online, uh, and uh, um, the use is actually free. So you can go ahead and go to the website and sign up, um, and you can actually uh, make use of those um, systems for running uh, HPC applications for your uh, for your studies, and also for uh, for generating for generating some of the uh, you know uh, results and papers. So uh, we encourage you to uh, to go to the web page and check it out, and and then write um, you know to, to sign up for the for the resource and access. Um, so first of all, um, the the talk is going to be about um, you know um, doing um, you know showing the application performance um, by by comparing different kind of hardware and also uh, using some tuning parameters, right? So um, in in a way that we first going to uh, inspect and do run run some profiles to kind of get a, get a, to, in order to get an understanding of how the application be behave. Um, and um, and trying to to find some ways to optimize the workload, uh, and we're looking in, in different areas of comparisons, such as in the CPU side, in the uh, in uh, networking I/O, um, and then apply some of the um, configuration tuning um, for for them. Um, so um, so for the application today, I'm going to do the same thing uh, as the one for tomorrow, and then at the end, I'm going to. Um, give you an overview, actually, and a conclusion uh, for that. So before everything, I want to do, uh, tell you, to show you some of the uh, things that I did um, in order to get uh, good performance runs uh, you know, for the, on the HPC applications. So in order to get, get HPC application um, you know, for good performance, first of all, you kind of want to make sure that all the nodes actually behave in a similar kind of manner. So no one node is actually dramatically faster than another, or we don't have like um, issues with one of the nodes actually slows down the whole, the rest of the, the cluster. 
and we you actually want to to find a way to uh, to do profile on the uh, on the user application so that you can kind of understanding you can kind of understand how much of the time actually spend on compute time versus network versus I/O. So in in that way, um, by understanding the application like that way, um, we will um, aim for the the area that actually get us the the most benefit. Um, and then um, we're going to um, and apply some of the um, you know tuning parameters for for those areas. Let's say that the CPU is actually um, consume a lot more power. Uh, I'm sorry, a lot, lot more percentage of time than than, than others. We we'll focus on on CPU side um, and, and repeat for for the other areas. So I'm um, here. I'm showing you some of the the, the tools I've used. Um, you know for um, for running, um, doing profile and also in inspecting application. So for uh, CPU related areas, I use you know obviously um, those ones actually mentioned up, th up there, um, and and there are other tools that actually for uh, for checking the CPU performance such as Limpack and you know and and for memory is stream. There are other ones that uh, I use for for other things like for the file I/O. Um, such as the ones that are listed up there uh, for for showing the bandwidth and block sizes, uh, I, I, I go I usually uh, go with um, IOSTAT and collect L and uh, in other um, profiling tools like that. And I use IOSTAT to kind of make sure that the uh, the performance on all the nodes are perform the same. There are other, uh, there are actually other um, tools from um, some of the vendors. Um, would provide use tools that actually making sure that all the nodes are be behaving the same, um, so that in order to get uh, get you a very good uh, performance on uh, on all, on all the nodes when you actually run a job across all of the nodes. Um, for MPI and for network, um, there are tools also listed right here, and I'm actually going to show you uh, a slide on um, getting um, an MPI profile later on. So first of the first of all. Uh, I'll be using uh, an application called Quantum Expresso uh, to demonstrate some of the performance uh, behavior. So this study is actually uh, a joint study that we have done with uh, uh, in the HPC Advisory Council with uh, Intel, Dell, and Mount So uh, we went over uh, some of the details together um, in order to, uh, to, to show you uh, some of the findings that we have done. So for more information, you can actually uh, go to the links right there for, uh, for the application and also for the vendor. So quantum espresso is is um, you know uh, is uh, um, quantum chemistry code uh, is an integrated suite um, that that does uh, you know electric uh, electronic structure calculation, right? So it so for 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 many things like uh, material modeling and um, you know density function um, and and plane waves. So this is the application that calculates all those kind of things. It stands for. Um, Quantum Espresso stands for um, the open source uh, package for research in electronic structure simulations and optimization. It's a free code, so it's a free application. That means that you actually can just download for free and, and start to, uh, to play around with. Um, so um, let's see. And, and the objective, again, is to kind of understand the um, performance behavior for, for Quantum Espresso uh, using the hardware. And then, we, we, and then what we are going to do is next is to kind of apply some of the tuning parameters and also um, changing some of the uh, hardware components in order to, to see how, um, how sensitive is the application to those uh, areas, to those hardware, and then to, um, to those areas. So first of all, uh, before everything, let me describe to you the hardware configuration that's been used for this uh, study. So this is run on a, a cluster of uh, 32 nodes, uh, Haswell cluster, uh, Haswell, ha Haswell nodes. The, um, the core counts for this uh, Haswell uh, node is actually 14 core uh, per socket. And we are running with the dual socket uh, uh, Haswell, so, so it's 28 cores per node. This is a really dense, uh, um, it's becoming denser and denser, like, uh, um, you know, um, number, of, number of cores that you can, that's available per node. Um, it, and um, in here, we're actually showing you that um, there's something called the memory snoop mode. This is actually new uh, in the Haswell uh, system architecture. 
Um, so the, in, the, in the cluster on die um, um, uh, snoop mode, what actually allows you to do is that um, you you actually um, divide the uh, CPU uh, socket into two different uh, memory lumen memory region. So in a single node case where you have um, you know two sockets, it means that actually you have like four lumen memory regions. So in a way that it allows you to uh, associate um, the the cores to those uh, memory um, um, faster. If it's, if it's actually inside the, new, the, the same Newman node. But uh, what actually happens is that if you actually have, um, you know, cores actually talking to the different Newman region, what actually does is that actually may, may, may result in significant slowdown. So there are some trade off in, in using this kind of memory snoop mode, but uh, at the time when I was doing this testing, uh, this is the, the Newman uh, configuration that I was using. Uh, the default, there. There are, there are more of the memory snoop mode actually available um, in the Haswell system. One of them is called uh, home snoop. The other one is called early, early snoop. Um, and the cluster on die is another snoop mode that's available. Um, one of them, were, um, the home snoop, is, is the one that actually is the, um, the one that's set by default. The early snoop is the one that uh, supposed to have, um, offer um, the um, the lowest latency if it's on a per node basis. So since we're actually running on a cluster, um, so we actually kind of want to have the, um, the the network latency to also be very low. Um, in at hindsight, I think uh, what I should could have used is the uh, is the home snoop or the early snoop, but not the cluster on die. But uh, later on, if we have time, or maybe tomorrow, um, I'm going to show you another application that may be doing uh, with the different uh, comparisons with um, uh, different kind of uh, snoop mode. That's new for uh, for Haswell. Um, as far as the uh, the uh, the other configuration um, that I'm using, um, I'm also comparing in this uh, study is that the previous generation of the cluster uh, that is called uh, the um, Jupiter, Jupiter. That is the Ivy Bridge based uh, cluster that has a slightly less core per node, uh, about 20 cores per node. Uh, it's a 10 core. Um, uh, processor that I was using, and the benchmark that I was using this time is the uh, the Dysa uh, PW benchmark. Uh, it's using the full set of uh, SCF steps unless otherwise stated, and also uh, no IO and unless it's otherwise stated, because uh, there will be one of the comparison I was I will be doing that's using some IO as well, and to see how much of the effect is going to the uh, going for the IO. So first of all, uh, let me uh, talk to you about the, uh, the, the interconnect comparison, uh, which is the one that uh, shown right here. So uh, we, we're taking the one gig key and ten and forty gig key um, compared with the infinite band. So because sometimes that you're actually not sure sometimes if uh, how how well is the internet can scale until you uh, you try with another interconnect and, and kind of compare and see. Well, as we can see right here, um, Ethernet. Can scale okay well until four nodes, or you know between two to four nodes. Uh, later on, I'm going to do a communication profile and kind of try to identify what may actually have caused this um, behavior. Um, you know, to see the the scalability goes drops down very fast uh, as, as soon as this uh, reaches up to four nodes. But uh, what we can see is that uh, the infinite band can scale up to around 16 node. At 32 node, it doesn't scale too well, but you know there are some reasons for that um, because you um, you know so first of all I'm using the um, the MPI mode in this um, uh, quantum espresso so in quantum espresso there are ways to actually uh, run which I'm going to talk about in subsequent slide um, MPI mode means that I'm actually launching one MPI process per CPU core so by having 28 um, uh, processor 28 cores per node as available in the processor, I'm actually literally launching 28 cores per, uh, per, um, per node. And as the number of nodes scales out to 32 nodes, we have like 892, 896 uh, CPU cores actually um, working, uh, and each one of them has an MPI process. They're doing computation as well as communication. So, so what you actually can see later on is that um, in, the, in the communication profile, 
is that there are, there are certain type of uh, communication patterns actually uh, occurred. Uh, as soon as you have uh, around like 900 cores actually running, um, you know, you get much more, many more um, kind of like communications that, that may be um, causing it to slow down, uh, especially on the MPI mode. And I'm also going to talk about something else besides MPI mode. Um, but uh, in this slide, I'm going to show that, you know, uh, Ethernet will not scale uh, very well and, uh, after four nodes or, or at all. And it will be very slow afterwards. So in this slide, what I'm going to show you, showing you here is that uh, different M how, how different MPI was, was react uh, to, uh, to uh, this uh, workload. This is also in MPI mode because it's for the sake of comparison. Uh, comparison. Uh, FDR and PINVAN is actually being used for this, for this case. Um, so I'm comparing the Intel MPI versus Open MPI. And there's also another Open MPI uh, distribution from Mellanox. It's called HPCX. So in here, uh, we, we're running the same, same workload comparing um, Intel MPI and Open MPI and HPCX. Um, for HPCX, the difference is being that it has the, uh, um, some uh, um, extra uh, communication library called uh, PML Yella. So for that, it actually opened up a lot on, in the performance uh, at, at the higher scale. So um, typically, OpenMPI, as you can see, would probably be, be uh, a little bit limited uh, in performance uh, up until like um, you know 16 nodes or 8 nodes. It doesn't scale very well. And, and Intel MPI and HPCX will continue to scale and into higher node counts. Um, what actually I'm, I'm showing you here uh, for the HPCX is that I'm also, um, you know, rather than uh, identifying that yellow PML is being used, which actually allows higher uh, scalability at, uh, at, at high node counts, but I, I'm also including some of the uh, memory allocation, um, memory allocation uh, method for, um, um, for, um, for, uh, for faster communications. Uh, this actually would have some implication on the cache um, conflicts. So, um, so by, by applying those, those um, parameters, I'm actually seeing much higher performance at the higher node count. Whoops. Um, okay, so this slide sh that, um, shows you that um, some of the things that um, I, I, I would use to uh, generate a communication profile. In a subsequent slide, I'm going to show you uh, what is the communication profile. So, um, so an MPI, an MPI profile that I use in here is called IPM. It's called the uh, integrated, me integrated memory monitoring. So it does um, profile of MPI communications. So as an example to run it, um, I, I specify using the, um, the modules that's available in HPCX and then um, and, and I do LD preload on the, um, on the IPM modules before my MPI run command. So after that, it will generate um, an XML file that allows me to, to do, um, you know, that, that actually basically encapsulate all the communication um, um, data into that XML file. In order to extract it and, and be able to, to generate those kind of um, um, results in graph, graphical format, um, the rest of the, um, uh, the commands I, I'm showing, right, showing you right here so uh, at the end, I used a, a parser that comes from the IPM to, to generate that um, uh, graphs in the subsequent slides. So what I have shown you earlier, uh, I've, I've, I've hinted to you earlier, is that um, uh, there are some, something about the communication in Quantum Expresso that may have contributed to, um, to the performance at a larger scale. So um, as you can see, at 32 node and and 896 uh, CPU cores, we have many of the, um, about a third of the communications actually stuck in, uh, in MPI barrier, and spanned in MPI barrier, uh, which is the collective uh, operations in MPI. 
And at the same time, we also have just as much, I think a quarter of the time I should spend in MPI oil, oil, oil to oil and oil reduce. So they are very communication heavy, uh, collective communication heavy. So, so it means that it, the type of communication may require many of the, um, of, the, of the CPU cores or the MPI process to, uh, to talk to each other. So this kind of communication is very, um, is very costly, it's very slow at a larger scale. And you get, you get even slower um, when you have more and more CPU cores. So, which is kind of why that, um, you know, uh, solutions like, uh, I mean, like um, uh, network uh, solutions like Ethernet would not be able to, to handle at, at a larger scale like that. Um, this is just another, um, you know, uh, way of putting that previous slide. But it's also show you that uh, this is when, um, when we have the largest percentage of uh, messages, you know, because when you have a small message like that and then have a big jump, it just means that a lot of uh, messages all of a sudden occurred in that region, in that message size. It's a way of looking at that um, a communication uh, pattern. So similarly, this is kind of how we, this is kind of how we show that uh, each one of those ranks um, are spending the time on, right? So let me just skip that. So as I said earlier, we have the MPI mode, means that we launch one process per uh, CPU core. Um, in Quantum Express, though, there's also another mode of running it. This is called an um, OpenMP MPI hybrid. In a hybrid mode, it means that each one of the MPI process will have the opportunity to, to spawn one or more threads. So in this, in this graph right here, what I'm showing you is that um, I have like uh, from one, two, one, one, two, four, eight, and 16, 32 nodes. So for each one of those, um, you know, um, the, those columns right here, and those, those col like uh, shades of color, uh, ones mean, one means that um, I have one process that launched per node, and I have like uh, 28 threads actually spawned per process. Um, on the other hand, so I, have, I have the other extreme where, you, where I have like 28 process you know, launch, which is the equivalent of MPI mode. 28 process spawns per node, only one thread or you know, just running on it. So what I found out from this, from this testing is that um, the, way, the way that, um, that gets the, the best performance, I think after some point is that um, is to have like four process each launch to one of the uh, Luma region uh, of that um, of that node, of that, of that of one of the four on that node, and spawn like certain threads for for each one of them. This actually has something to do with the um, um, the snoop mode that I mentioned earlier. So had I not have the uh, the QPI memory snoop mode set up like to be like that, I may actually have a different different result. Um, because I, I would not know that until I actually change it and try it again, which is kind of unfortunate because I did not do that. So, um, so if I actually have the opportunity to do, the, to do it again, I probably would do the same um, so that this actually may, may uh, show up differently. But uh, this is actually a good test because, um, you know, if I actually have another uh, application that allows me to do something like this, being able to spawn and uh, you know to, to spawn like a, a process and then I mean like to launch a process and spawn additional threads in a hybrid mode, uh, this will be actually a good very good test. So by running in, in this in this manner, four process per node and then seven threads, it actually uh, uh, you know gives me the, the best performance. I think another reason for for me uh, to run like that is because in this uh, benchmark workload the. Um, um, the AUS, UF, SURF, like 111 uh, Atom uh, um, workload, from what I've known is that uh, it actually will not scale well either way because it's the, it's that it's, there are not too much workload to be spread across to that many processes. So if I actually have, have to try it again, I probably will go for another bigger workload that actually maybe, um, you know, that can demonstrate even higher performance. So very quickly, um, I want to show you um, some of the things that I, I did to, to, um, to tune it. So, so on the left-hand side, um, this is where I have the, um, have the untuned case. This is when I have the, um, the, the default settings at in Quantum Expresso with no any kind of additional flags I've used. 
And on the, uh, the, the, um, the darker kind of red, this is the one that I have for the, uh, uh, some of the uh, tuning parameters and compiler flex I've added. Um, first of all, uh, there was the, um, the uh, dash pick 03, you know, um, the AVX2 uh, and uh, instruction um, uh, set kind of flags, and also the rest of the flags that are actually in there, and also in, in available, I mean, um, make it available the, uh, the Intel MKL as, at the same time. So as you can see, the, the lighter, lighter shade of, of red, it doesn't really, it doesn't scale at all. It basically have no gain as you, as you go for many, many nodes. So, so um, if you ever run your open source code in uh, out of the box manner, so you definitely want to in spend some time investigate on the uh, on the CPU performance. Um, scale pack definitely made some big, um, you know, um, you know, some some change, uh, some uh, improvement, I would say. And there's something called the the uh, the Alpa uh, in, inside Quantum Expresso. Alpa is is the is it's, it's like um, it allows you to do um, uh, some diagonalization at the gamma rate. So it is inside Quantum Express so that allows you to do better um, parallelism. So as we can see, you know, uh, even at four node, we are able to get like 25% uh, of the gain. So uh, part of the, the, the gain that I attribute to the left hand side is, is, is from Alpa. So um, I would encourage if you actually do get to run Quantum Express so, so so for the right-hand side case, I don't have much time to run, so I just want to run for one iteration. Um, so for this, for this test, I'm, I'm comparing the older generations versus the newer generation of the hardware, right? So um, Jupiter is the older, older generation. This is the Ivory Bridge cluster. Thor is on the other hand, um, at the, on the other hand, this is the Haswell cluster. So applying the same uh, compiler flag, and, uh, and other than hardware, the software is the same. So, um, so I'm just listing out some of the uh, high-level uh, differences between the two, uh, which are the this number of CPU uh, cores available and the CPU speed differences. Infinite band is the same, um, and and this is the um, the difference I see in performance between the two. The the same difference is actually seen on uh, on different node sizes. So this is just want to point you out to that. Right. So so I use four um, four cores for uh, MPI process per node, and then spawn at whatever the threads that uh, that would match uh, that's on the system. So for the, for the Jupiter, I have four cores per node, and I will launch five threads. And on four, which is the Haswell cluster. There are 28 cores available, so I use I, I will run uh, four cores per node and then seven threads in order to match whatever is available. So I did not really um, intentionally put less threads or more threads just for that. So I, I would say I will actually want to exercise as much available on those systems so to, for, to have for, um, to have a fair comparison. Um, so for this slide, um, I'm comparing um, the. Um, the CPU clock frequency in order to see um, the benefits of um, of having more having a faster CPU. Um, the label here is, is actually not right because it's actually supposed to mean that uh, the power consumption in watts. So it's not performance rating. But what we can see here is that um, high clock frequency obviously help, but at what rate and what power um, you know how much power additional. So what we can see is that it, it gains around like you know nine to twelve percent if you're actually bumping from the uh, two point three gigahertz to two point six gigahertz. So all these tests have um, were run with the turbo mode disabled because turbo mode can actually fluctuate a lot depending on the environment environmental fa factor, such as how cool is the uh, data center. Um, you know this is something that we cannot control. Um, and on the uh, 2.0 to 2.6 gigahertz, you know, is is quite a lot of the um, uh, speed jump, and we we get 20 to 23 percent of the difference. Uh, the power consumption is not as not as much. It's also in a more gradual man manner. The the, uh, the power measurement is actually coming from something uh, on uh, on the BMC, the baseboard uh, management system, management control, which is actually coming from the um, 
you know, you can actually get it from uh, um, the system management, which is kind of outside from the operating system. There's something called IPMI, if you're familiar with it. So it's, it's coming from the baseboard management. Um, they're also uh, in charge of the, the, tem uh, the temperature of the system, uh, measuring temperature of the system, and also power, and also you can actually do power off and on and power cycle with that, uh, that feature that on, that's available on the, on the server. So, um, yeah. Um, so for this case, I'm showing you right here. So this is on back to the, um, the same cluster that I've, that, that I've been working on, the, the, uh, the Haswell cluster. So in this case, I'm using, I'm, I'm comparing the performance between uh, the uh, 28 core uh, per node versus uh, fewer cores per node that's available on the system. Uh, this is a hybrid mode, so, um, so I'm only running four process per node and spawn different kind of threads available. So, so from seven threads to six and two to five and two four. And I see, uh, you know, obviously we see uh, less and less uh, performance by, by having less threads available. I mean, less, less calls to run. So, um, so this is a way that, you know, in my, in my, in my opinion to, to kind of, you know, to measure um, the effect of, you know, having more and more or less and less, you know, calls to the, for the application. Um, so as I, as I mentioned earlier, I deliberately disable IO in, in this case, um, but, uh, but I, I also have this run right here that actually shows you the performance difference by, by enabling IO. Um, so there's the settings in the Quantum Express so to disable IO. I also list it here. Um, the IO part of it is, um, I want to mention to you is that um, I pre-staged the uh, input um, on all the nodes. So um, the network should have nothing to do with it. Okay, so, so sometimes the network can actually get in the way when you have you know, too many uh, disk reads and writes and into the, the, um, the network um, uh, file system. Uh, but for this case, it, it, it basically means that uh, the time that actually is spent on, on reading and writing. So we, we see around like 28% of the increase by uh, enabling I.O. So as for summary, um, you know, so this is just a recap of what I've been talking about. So um, the, the difference in, in, in compiling, compiler tuning, so it was just very important. We show uh, a great deal of uh, performance improvement by, by applying those, um, you, know, uh, um, you know, compiler flags and, and in the algebra library like Scala Pack. Um, there are also, um, you know, um, some improvement Especially some scalability improvement by by doing the um, uh, the hybrid mode that actually would allow us to the scale out um, to many nodes because part of the reason is actually because of this um, the workload size is actually not not big enough to scale to many of these um, uh, nodes using all all in MPI process. Um, plus, there are also you know the CPU differences and in the connect, which is also very important. Um, right. So I think that's all I have for for today.